this means that we can look at systems of, I shouldn't say any size, but we can look at vastly more larger systems and more complicated systems. And this is, of course, what we need in order to understand the systems that chemists are studying today. Huge supramolecular systems, biochemical molecules, large assemblies in material science. And all these disciplines use the theory that was, that was founded by our three laureates. It is really a, a, a cross-disciplinary part of chemistry which goes into all the fields and enriches them. But does it mean that if you don't have the theoretical model, you don't really understand what's going on? It's always a question of complexity. If you have a simple system, you can get very dependable answers by using just experiment. But experiment and physics, sorry, <laughs> experiment and theory go hand in hand. We need to understand why things happen. We need to understand what makes things happen. And as Gunnar Karlström was, was explaining during, during his resume of the prize, the real problem is that most chemical methods tell us about what things look like before a reaction and what they look like after a reaction. There is a, there is a, a classical picture of this which is given in many textbooks of chemistry where a chemical reaction is likened to a, a piece of drama. And if you go in and make the measurements before and after, it's like seeing the actors before Hamlet and all the dead bodies after, and then you wonder what happened in the middle. And actually, there is some interesting action there. And this is what theoretical chemistry provides us with, the whole drama. Yeah, so you 